take uh, Donovan, if you hope to give your thoughts on being back and what this means to you. Let me see if I can answer all your questions here in this statement. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy to be back. Uh, you know, I've never I feel like I've never left, and uh, you know, being a part of a rich tradition here at Syracuse, I think it's important that you always try to take time out uh, and try to you know give better opportunity for the younger generation that follows. Them. Uh, in this facility here, you know, donating money and still, you know, giving time and effort to come back and talk to some of the guys and uh, communicating with some of the alums who have graduated, graduated with me and uh, had an opportunity to play, being on the same playing field. Uh, we want to just, you know, kind of give better opportunities for uh, guys who, you know, dream of coming and wearing a Syracuse uniform, uh, dream of coming and graduating from Syracuse University. Uh, and that's something that we've all tried to come together uh, and make better. Uh, for a better place and uh, you know being here in this facility brings back a lot of memories uh, a lot of this stuff didn't look like this when I was here uh, but yet still still has the, that same kind of feeling walking through those doors and uh, it just feels like it's like Coach P.B. walking around the corner probably trying to tell me to go in the weight room or go, go do something so uh, it's a lot of fun I enjoy watching uh, all our Syracuse teams and our support um, and just look forward to great things happening in the future I know every kid who uh, picks up a football dreams of the NFL, but when you first stepped on campus, did you ever think that you would have the career you've had, not just here, but even after? Absolutely not. I think for a lot of us, and not just athletes, you know, when we take another step and another challenge, we think about the next day. We don't think five years down the road, ten years down the road. We focus on what we have to do the next day. And uh, for me, it was walking through those doors and trying to figure out how I was going to be in practice, um, you know, going to class, how I was going to get to class, was I going to be in the right class, um, and it just continues on each and every day, and, and as you continue to get older here at Syracuse, you know, you go through your freshman, sophomore, junior year, by your senior year, you just start to reflect on how fast it's, it's, it's went, uh, from walking through the doors as a freshman, and your mom and dad dropping you off, and, you know, to you pretty much driving home after you graduate, you know, all the way from Syracuse, and kind of thinking about, about the good times, so... Um, you know, at this particular point, you know, just reflecting, you know, back now, uh, it just brings a smile to your face. Some of the things, some of the dumb things that we did while we were kids, uh, to some of the things that kids are getting caught with now with the social media, uh, it's pretty scary. Is there a moment, um, looking back on your Syracuse career, either on the field or off, that maybe sticks out above the rest? Well, for me, uh, you know, it could easily be. Uh, the athletic side of things. But for me, it was walking across that stage and graduating uh, here at Syracuse University. You know, it was one in which being the first in my family to graduate from a four-year university, uh, receiving my degree in what in which I'm utilizing now in speech communication, uh, getting some experience in broadcasting. Um, and, and that was part of my decision as a high schooler coming here was I know that athletically where I would be able to do it. Uh, be able to compete at a high level versus some top teams, but most importantly, gain that experience and become a broadcaster when things were done, uh, and where it would be able to uh, give me opportunities in that field. And stuff. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful thing for me, and, and to talk to to guys like Rick Wright, who I talked to when I first got here, uh, and still stay in communication when we run into each other, either the meetings or wherever. Uh, but just we begin to reflect on from the beginning to where we're at. Now. A lot of fans kind of look at those teams you were on here as kind of Syracuse's heyday when they were perennial top 25 team. Do you think that this program can get back there given all the changes in college football and where things are? Absolutely. Uh, I've always felt like, you know, for a college and NFL team, you can't win without a quarterback. And when you establish that quarterback, you're, that's your quarterback for years, you know, then you can begin to build around them. Uh, they have some talented players here, a defense that flies around. You know, they have athletic guys at the skill position. Uh, but I think you, what you've seen is you've seen a, a glimpse of, of a young man in T. Hunt that uh, could possibly be the quarterback for years to come. And he has the, all the intangibles, the strong arm, the attitude, uh, the brains, uh, and that's where it starts. And uh, everything will begin to follow as he gains experience uh, all throughout this year and for years to come. Now, throughout your career, you were uh, criticized at times, probably unfairly by the media. Is it weird to be, do you consider yourself one of us now? And is it, and when you criticize guys, is it, is it weird? Uh, no, I don't see myself as one of you guys. Um, <laughs> you know, but, but the whole thing about it, hey, it made me who I was. And uh, you have to be able to take criticism 
uh, and, and use it positively. And I've used that as motivation each and every time throughout my playing days. And at this particular point, when I'm doing what I'm doing, um, if I criticize somebody, I try to not to make it personal, uh, just from what I've seen. And hopefully, they'll do the same thing that I did. Take what I've seen and what I've said uh, and use it in a positive light. And, you know, whatever I can do to motivate others. Uh, my thing for me is I like to mentor a lot of the young guys uh, who are not just in football, but just in you know, any other sports or any, any challenges that they may face. Uh, you know, I've been through the arena for a few. I've had highs, I've had lows. And I think it's for all of us to be able to give back and, um, you know, show your experience and explain to them of ways of handling it and making it better in the future for them. Feels like uh, back in 99, coming out of that tunnel. Um, you know, I look around and see some of the familiar faces that I played with, uh, guys who played such a major part throughout my five years here. Uh, to come back and have them be a part of it is special. And the energy to be high, you know, I, I really look over on the side and I try, I'm going to try to treat it just like playing my hand. You know, that last game in the dome, 66 to 13, probably y'all were like six or seven. But, um, you know, don't make me feel old, but. Uh, it was a wonderful time, and, and one in which I've always will remember um, you know, for myself and Jason. You know, being seniors in that game, and the last time we played Miami, we approached it just like it was our Super Bowl. And uh, coming out of that tunnel on Saturday, that's how I'm going to approach it. Like it's uh, coming out of the Super Bowl tunnel, letting that my team just uh, need to take it on the couch. Terrell Hunt seemed pretty excited to get a chance to meet you. Have you had a chance to talk to him yet? I haven't. And uh, after we're done here, I'm to get, a, get a chance to go sit down and talk with him. And, uh, I've watched him uh, ever since his first start. And, you know, I didn't want to bother him during, during uh, the season when I was thinking, you know, Coach Jacob was, was trying to make a decision at that time. And, you know, I just enjoy his progression. You know, I enjoy what they've been able to do while he's been under the helm. And uh, he's a talented player, strong arm, can make plays. And, uh, you know, one thing that I enjoyed him defensively, you know, where you know, I had a young quarterback at the T uh, on the other side, he had a Experienced quarterback in Todd Boyd, you know, very similar career that I think that, you know, maybe seeing the type of career that Todd Boyd can have at this season, you know, you may be T Hunt in about two years. So, they um, be talking about Syracuse football. Time for a couple more questions. Uh, reminisced a little bit on the stupid things you did. Any fun stories that you can share with us? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> um, you know, those are kind of buried and up on sky top or, you know, might be down on Marshall Street, you know, I don't know, but those are things that stay kind of here. Um, let's just say we had a great time, great time. Donovan, you mentioned your teammates before. What are some of those relationships that withstood the test of time that you're proud to call friends even today? Well, I mean, when, when you can pick up a phone and call, uh, you're starting back here. You know, you can, you can talk to uh, Ian and Kyle McIntosh. You can, you can talk to Rob Conrad. Or you look at your receivers and you pick up a phone and call Kevin Johnson. Or, or when you see Gwen Spotwood or, or, you know, any of the tight ends at Kasim's and Cena and Roland Williams. And, you know, you think of your offensive linemen with Harvey Pennypacker and, and Scott Kiernan and, and all those guys, the P-Line brothers. Uh, or on defense and see Jason Pose, Antoine Pons, Keith Bullock, um, Kevin Abrams, you know, Rod Gatson, you know, Philip, Philip Nash. You know, those particular guys that, you know, may not be – names that, that are click with you guys, but when I look at highlight films and think about the Gator Bowl, think about the Liberty Bowl, you know, think about the Orange Bowl, you know, those bowls in which we spent time together and laughed and joked and, and played cards to, you know, all of us now with kids and, and married and, you know, thinking about what we're going to do as a family together and, uh, you know, watching kids kind of grow up at, and, and be men and be beautiful women, you know, that's something that, that stands alone in us being here in this facility. Because when you leave here, it's what do you do next. And I, that those relationships are something that you cherish. Take a final question for Donovan. Uh, I know it's an experience you had in Philadelphia earlier this year, but what will the emotion be like when you finally see that curtain come down and you see that number five up there in this place that you, you, know, you love and you care about? Well, they're very similar, but you know this is where it started for me. Um, you know, it, it's for a university that didn't retire numbers. You know, for 44 to continue on for so many years, and we know of the likes of, of Ernie Davis and, and Jim Brown, Floyd Little, and those guys. And then Rob played with me, War 44. You know, to have that number finally retired. And, uh, you know, now to look up and see your number up there with, with Don McPherson. Donnie Mack was a guy that, that uh, you know, I heard so much about when I got here. 
and we became great friends. You know, a guy who played in Philadelphia before I did. You know, so uh, Donnie Mack obviously was coached by the coach McPherson, uh, and I had Coach P, so we kind of have an ongoing battle of who's the better coach that he has. But, uh, just like the coaches have an ongoing battle of who's the better player, but uh, that's the fun things about it. You know, when you can look up and see 44 retire, but now you can look up and see number nine and then have your number up there with, with those guys. That's a special feeling. And with my kids to uh, grow up and, and receive, hopefully, scholarships or come to Syracuse University to play, they can look up and, and know that their daddy finally did something. So, <laughs> you know, you know how your young generation, like, you don't think your father did anything. So that's some, something that they can watch and look at and say, okay, he did really do something.